Let's investigate super dense coding and compare it to quantum teleportation. In this video, we're going to analyze quantum circuit diagrams. Let's consider two scientists called Alice and Bob. These scientists are going to follow the procedure for super dense coding, which I will abbreviate as SDC. That's super dense coding. First, consider two qubits, which we will call qubit 1 and qubit 2. Qubit 1 will be prepared in the state 0, and qubit 2 will also be prepared in the state 0. Collectively, this two qubit system is prepared or initialized in the computational basis state denoted by 0, 0. The next step is to entangle these qubits. We can do that by applying the Hadamard gate to qubit 1, followed by the controlled not gate. And the controlled not gate treats qubit 1 as the control qubit and qubit 2 as the target qubit. We can describe these qubits as lines in these diagrams. So these lines flow from left to right. The passage of time by convention is described as a flow from left to right. So this is where the qubits are initialized. And then as we go from left to right, we can see all the things that are happening to the qubits. So first over here, we have a computational basis state, 0, 0. And this action of these unitary operators turns this into a bell state, which is a maximally entangled state. The next part involves separating these qubits. So to perform this entanglement procedure, uh, we need the qubits to be together. So the qubits can be prepared by a third party. We can call him Charlie. So Charlie can be responsible for doing the entanglement and preparing these qubits. Then these two qubits have to be sent to the labs where Alice and Bob reside. Qubit 1 will be sent to Alice's lab, and qubit 2 will be sent to Bob's lab. So now these qubits are entangled and they are spatially separated. They are located in different labs. So Alice, in her lab, she has two classical bits. We can call those classical bits B1 and B0. These classical bits can take on values 0 and 1. So this can be 0 or 1, and this can be 0 or 1. In total, there are four possibilities. So the goal of this procedure in super dense coding is to send two classical bits of information from Alice's lab to Bob's lab. And we're going to do that by transmitting a qubit, a single qubit from Alice's lab to Bob's lab. So we're going to have the net effect of sending two classical bits. But in practice, the only thing that we're exchanging between the labs is a single qubit. So that is super dense coding. The next part of this procedure is going to be done by Alice. Alice is going to take this classical bit, denoted by B0, and she's going to use that to implement a classically controlled NOT gate. So this is a bit flip, but it is classically controlled. That is why I'm drawing, drawing these double lines over here. So notice that single lines denote qubits. These are quantum bits but double lines denote classical bits. And we're also going to use B1 to implement a classically controlled phase flip. So that can be thought of as a controlled Z gate. And this is the symbol for a controlled Z gate. But notice that we have double lines because this is classically controlled. And I'll complete this over here. And this line is going to have nothing over here. You can think of this as the identity operator. So this is Bob's qubit, and it is just sitting in Bob's lab for now. So while Alice is modifying her qubit. So all of this stuff is happening in Alice's lab. The next part involves Alice sending this qubit over to Bob's lab. So she is just going to send a single qubit. And that qubit is going to have enough information in it to reconstruct these two classical bits. And the next thing that has to happen is when Bob receives both of these qubits, he has to apply the controlled NOT gate 
And this is going to be followed by the Hadamard gate. So this is the opposite order to what we had over here when we were preparing the entangled state, which is a bell state. And after this, Bob is going to perform a measurement on both of these qubits. And this is the symbol for measurement. And when he measures these qubits, he's going to get classical bits. So that's double lines over here. And the values are going to be B1 and B0. So this is the procedure that is known as super dense coding. Alice does this part of the procedure, and then Bob does this part of the procedure. So this part over here, the initial entangling, can be done by both Alice and Bob, or it can be done by a third party, we can call him Charlie, who sends qubit 1 and qubit 2 to Alice's lab and Bob's lab, respectively. When we're drawing this diagram, we can also continue these lines all the way to the end. So that is also acceptable when you're drawing these diagrams. So these guys are classical bits, and all of these guys over here, these are quantum bits, which are known as qubits. Let's compare this quantum circuit diagram to the quantum circuit diagram that describes the procedure for quantum teleportation. So I'll draw this quantum teleportation diagram over here. And we can abbreviate that as QT. That's quantum teleportation. Quantum teleportation involves three qubits. And these three qubits are initialized in some general state psi, which resides in Alice's lab. And the remaining two qubits are initialized in the state's zero. So we have zero, zero. And we begin by starting with this entanglement procedure again. So we apply the Hadamard gate and then the controlled knot gate. So that produces a bell state, which is maximally entangled. And then we apply the controlled knot gate again and the Hadamard, but it does not involve these two qubits. It actually involves this third qubit, which exists in Alice's lab. So Alice takes this qubit, and she interacts that qubit with her pair, her, her one of these uh, entangled pairs over here. And after that, she performs measurements. So we have the symbol for a measurement and a measurement. And the results of those measurements are going to produce bits, classical bits. And we can use those classical bits to implement classically controlled not gates and Z gates, or bit flips and phase flips. So here we have a double line, because this is a classical bit, and that goes down all the way to here. And this is what Bob needs to do when he receives the information. And that is going to guarantee that this state over here is the same state that appears in Alice's lab. So what is happening over here? Alice is responsible for this part of the procedure and Alice is responsible for measurement. Then Alice sends two classical bits of information through a classical channel. And this is now in Bob's lab. So Bob has this bottom qubit in his lab, and he has to apply these classically controlled bit flips and phase flips. And these uh, corrections make sure that the state that he has on this qubit is the same as the state that Alice had up here. In this process of quantum teleportation, this state gets destroyed. So that's actually a consequence of the no cloning theorem. You're not allowed to make exact copies of qubit states, but you are allowed to teleport them if you utilize the property of entanglement. So this procedure has the net effect of teleporting a qubit state from Alice's lab to Bob's lab. The thing that they're actually sending between each other, Alice is actually sending two classical bits. So that's the opposite of what is happening in super dense coding. In super dense coding, a qubit, a single qubit is being sent between Alice's lab and Bob's lab. And the net effect is to communicate two classical bits of information. So it's exactly the opposite uh, procedure that we're trying to do. And you can see that the quantum circuit diagrams are composed of similar components. So you have this entanglement part, and this unentanglement part. So we have entanglement, and then we're unentangling them. And you also have measurement present over here and over here. And you also have the classically controlled bit flip and phase flip. That's present here and over here. But the tasks that Alice and Bob need to do are a little different. Over here, it is Alice that is responsible for implementing these classically controlled bit flips and phase flips. 
and Bob is responsible for unentangling the qubits and then measuring them. But in quantum teleportation, it is Alice that is the one who is performing measurements and then sending classical bits of information. So this requires a classical channel to send two classical bits, and this requires a quantum channel to send this first qubit over here. So at this stage in the quantum circuit, this is happening in Alice's lab, and this stage over here, this is happening in Bob's lab. So Bob can only do this once he receives that qubit from Alice. So now what I want to do is examine some important stages in this quantum circuit. So first, let's have a look at what is happening at this stage in the quantum circuit. At this stage, we can denote this state of a, of a two-qubit system as beta, zero, zero. This is a Bell state. So we have moved from the computational basis to the Bell basis. After uh, these co classically controlled gates have been applied in Alice's lab, the result is the state beta B1, B0. And we'll go into the details as to how this change happens. And then before measurement over here, after the states have been unentangled, that is the same as the state B1, B0. So this is in the Bell basis, and this over here, this is a computational basis state. And if you measure this computational basis state, you will get the values B1 and B0 as the two classical bits. And they emerge from the qubits after measurement has taken place. So we lose the quantum properties when we perform this measurement, and we just get this classical information. And that classical information is the same information appearing in Bob's lab that was in Alice's lab. So we've used a quantum channel to send two classical bits by only sending a single qubit. So a single qubit has enough information in it to tell us two classical bits of information. And that, that is amazing, and it is only possible because of the property of entanglement. So now let's have a look, let's write this down in the form of an equation. Over here we have C1x2, that is notation for this controlled NOT gate, and then we have H1, that is the notation for this Hadamard gate. You could also write this as Hadamard tensor product with the identity, because not applying anything is the same as applying the identity. But this notation is more condensed because we just write a subscript to tell us which qubit we're acting on. So this combination, H1 followed by the control knot, that needs to act on the computational basis state 0, 0, and that will produce the Bell basis state beta 0, 0. So this equation describes the entanglement procedure, which is also present in the quantum teleportation protocol. Next, let's have a look at what happens in between these two red lines. So we need to apply uh, z and x to qubit 1, depending on the values of b1 and b0. And this is going to act on the state beta 0, 0. And that's going to produce another Bell state, which is beta b1, b0. So that is how we go from this state to this state over here. Notice that the order in which I write these operators is the opposite order to which they appear in this quantum circuit diagram. That's because by convention, time flows from left to right in this diagram. But the convention for writing operators is this convention, where the one that is closest to the ket is applied first. So on the right, we first apply this one and then this one. We can also use the associative property and write these guys out as matrix representations multiply them, and then create a matrix representation of an operator, so a single operator. And we can then apply that operator on the state. But either way, the order is essential. This one has to come on the right, and this one has to come on the left, which is the opposite order to what we see in the diagram. So this over here allows us to apply the controlled uh, bit flip and phase flip. And these are classically controlled gates. That is why this double line is here. B1 and B0 can be 0 or 1. So if these values of the exponents are 0, that means we don't apply the operator. But if the value of the exponent is 1, that means you apply the operator once. So that is what's happening in this middle section over here. That is what's going on in Alice's lab. So that's how Alice uh, encodes this classical information into this qubit. Then what happens over here? We unentangle, and that's the same as applying H1, C1, X2 to the state beta b1, b0. And this then produces the computational basis state 
B1, B0. So that is what's going on over here. And we can write all of these three equations in a single equation, which includes everything up to before this measurement. So this last equation takes us from here to here. And then this is right before the measurement. And then when we perform the measurement, we get rid of quantum mechanics and we're back to classical mechanics. And we have two classical bits. So we can write this as H1, C1, X2, Z1 to the power of B1, X1 to the power of B0, C1, X2, H1, and all of this is being applied to the ket 0, 0. And that produces the ket B1, B0. So this is a computational basis state, and this is also a computational basis state. So we begin in the computational basis, and we finish in the computational basis before measurement. This intermediate stage is happening in the Bell basis. So these Hadamards and control knots are being used to move from the computational basis into the Bell basis, and then we can go back again. So these are actually the Hermitian adjoints of each other. When you swap the order of these guys, you get the Hermitian adjoint. So the Hermitian adjoint of these unitaries is the inverse. So this combination is the inverse of this combination. And we sandwich these operators in between this guy and its inverse. Let's examine the four cases. So the four possible uh, cases that Alice could be encoding if she is sending that information. First, let's have a look at the case where we have 0, 0. So if we have B1 and B0 equal to 0, that means we don't apply either of these operators. That means this can be treated as the identity. And we can then take this and its inverse, and that's also going to give the identity. So we'll just have all of this condensing down to the identity. And the identity acting on this state is not going to change the state. So that's going to give the state 0, 0. And that's going to correspond to the values 0 and 0 over here when the measurement takes place. So that's the identity case. And let's write that down over here. So if we have z1, x1, both raised to the power of 0, and that's acting on the Bell state, beta, 0, 0. That is just going to be of this state over here. And that state can be written explicitly as 1 over the square root of 2, that's a normalization coefficient, times 0, 0 plus 1, 1. And this is the maximally entangled state that we get from this part over here and from this part over here. So that's the beginning. And we can write this as just beta 0, 0, or we can alternatively write this as phi plus. And phi plus is just another notation for this state. Now, let's have a look at the case where we have z1 and x1 raised to the power of 0 and 1. So if we do this, we're just going to have a bit flip on the first qubit. So a bit flip on the first qubit, what is that going to do? Well, it's going to take this 0 and this 1, and it's going to swap them. So that's going to produce 1, 0 plus 0, 1. So this is the bit flip acting only on the first qubit. And because the addition of these kets is commutative, we can actually swap the order around over here. And we can write this state first, and then this state. So that is how it's usually written. This can be denoted as beta 0, 1. And it can also be denoted as psi plus. So here we have phi plus and psi plus. The plus tells us that there is a plus uh, in this uh, superposition, or a linear combination of kets. Now let's have a look at the case where we have uh, 1, 0 as the exponents. So that corresponds to 1, 0 over here. B1 is equal to 1, and B0 is equal to 0. So that means we don't apply this bit flip, but we do apply the phase flip. It's the opposite of what's going on over here. In this case, in 0, 1, here we have 0, 1, we just apply this bit flip, but we don't apply the phase flip. So let's see what the phase flip does to the first qubit. So what we need to do is write the normalization coefficient, and then we're going to have a minus sign on this 1 over here. So we have 0, 0, minus 1, 1. And this can be written as beta 1, 0. And it can also be written as phi minus. So this is very similar to this phi plus. The only difference is that there is a relative phase. 
and that relative phase is equivalent to a coefficient of minus one. And then let's have a look at the final case. So the final case is if we act with both z and x. So we have one, one, the exponents are one, one. And we can take beta zero, zero. And what is that going to do? Well, first we have to apply the bit flip. So when we apply this bit flip, we're going to get this state over here. Then we apply the phase flip. The phase flip is going to take this one and it's going to map it to a minus one. So we're going to have a minus sign on this state. We have minus one zero plus zero one. And note that you can swap these guys around. Addition is commutative. You can also swap these guys around to write it in the standard form. And this can be expressed as beta one one, or it can be written as psi with a minus sign. So it's just like this psi over here, but now we have a minus sign. So phi is used to denote the fact that these are the same and these are the same. And psi is used to denote the fact that these are different. And a plus and a minus is used to denote whether there is a relative phase present between the two states in the superposition. We can write all of these operators in a more condensed form. So whenever you see uh, z to the power of zero, x to the power of zero, that's the same as the identity. Whenever you see uh, z to the power of zero, x to the power of one, that's the same as x. And whenever you see z to the power of one, x to the power of zero, that's the same as z. What about this last case? What about z to the power of one and x to the power of one? This one, one case. That's actually equivalent to i times Pauli y. So here we have the Pauli y matrix being multiplied by a coefficient of plus i. And if we were to swap the order over here, we would have a coefficient of minus i. So these guys, if you swap the order in this product, you will get a minus sign introduced. So if you apply both a bit flip and a phase flip, it's the same as applying Pauli y up to a phase vector, up to this coefficient, which is a global coefficient on, on this state over here. So it's, it's this, that's this value of plus i. So this is what these operators are equivalent to. Notice that I have specifically written one as the subscript for all of these operators. That's because they are only acting on the first qubit. That is this qubit that gets sent to Alice's lab. So they are not acting on Bob's qubit. Bob only gets to uh, deal with this first qubit when Alice sends it to him through a quantum channel. So these are the four cases. This is what Alice has to do to her uh, qubit in this entangled pair in order to communicate these two classical bits of information. So that's what she has to do to prepare the state before she sends qubit one over to Bob's lab. And then Bob can unentangle that state and take it from the bell basis back to the computational basis. And when it's back in the computational basis, he can measure that state and it's going to give the values that Alice was intending to communicate. So you can see what has happened over here. We have uh, looked at every possible case for this super dense coding and all the things that Alice needs to do. So hopefully this video was helpful in understanding super dense coding and quantum teleportation. We compared both of the protocols and we looked at them visually through uh, quantum circuit diagrams. And we also wrote out this equation over here, which tells us exactly all of the operators that are acting on this two qubit system. And note that this is not a purely quantum system over here. We have some classical uh, gates over here. We have classically controlled gates that are being used in Alice's lab. And then we have measurement, which produces classical results. These are classical values. There are classical bits. And that is the goal, to communicate these two bits from Alice's lab to Bob's lab. So uh, the, the ultimate difference between these two procedures is that in super dense coding, the aim is to send two classical bits by sending a single qubit through a quantum channel. And over here, we're sending two uh, classical bits through a classical channel in order to teleport a single qubit. So it's the opposite procedure that we are undertaking. Hopefully this video was helpful.